Welcome to the Somewhat Frank podcast, hosted by entrepreneur, author, and investor, Frank Gruber, and joined by entrepreneur, lawyer, and investor, John Goodtimes Guidos. After each having successful startup exits, these two college friends cover a wide array of the latest trends and topics in tech, startups, investing, entertainment, and life. You'll notice they like to live life to the fullest with lots of adventure and believe in celebrating those important wins along the way. The podcast is produced with the help of Established, a strategic consultancy focused on corporate innovation, entrepreneurs, and the ecosystems that support and elevate them. Now it's time to be somewhat frank. Let's get to it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Somewhat Frank Podcast. I'm your host, Frank Gruber, and today I'm joined with two colleagues, my longtime friend and colleague and fellow entrepreneur, Johnny Goodtimes Guidos. Welcome, Johnny. Hi, Frank. I'm also joined by a special guest that joined us last week or last time as well, my partner in business life and also my office mate, Miss Jen Consalvo. How are you doing, Jen? I'm feeling great today. Good to be here. Excellent. We're going to get get going here. This is going to be a quick one. It's it's holiday time. Things are crazy behind the scenes as we scurry around getting everything done before we take a little bit of a, a break, uh, a few days to celebrate uh, the holidays. And before we do, I want to just, you know, usually we like to celebrate uh, people and, and our network and things that are happening. And quite honestly, um, there's been everything happening so quickly the last month. It's been a blur. There's uh, so much happening that I just lost track. So what I thought it might be nice is just to take a second to um, think of back to like 2021 and, and what a year it's been. And maybe if you wanted to, everyone kind of go around the horn and pinpoint, is there anything that um, this year that stands out as like your favorite thing or your, you know, maybe these are your, these are a few of your favorite things. Like, I don't know that. I, and by the way, that has all of a sudden turned into a Christmas song I've heard. I don't know why that is. Isn't that from Sound of Music? It sure is. It's uh, it was from the sound of music and it actually took place during a summer rainstorm, <laughs> which is kind of ironic if you think about it, that now it's a holiday song. But I guess, you know, people equate my favorite things and maybe there was a line in there about like packages and I don't know. Is that recent? I've always grown up with the understanding that was a Christmas song. Oh, no, it's it's sound of music it must be. Re- well, maybe it's not recent. Yeah, no, it was from The Sound of Music and, uh, you know, many, many years ago, but maybe uh, we've just heard it more this year than ever. People are recording it in new holiday ways. Yeah, I'm curious. We're going to have to do a little research to figure out when that started. Because, John, if you heard it from like a long time ago and heard it growing up, there has to be a pinpoint. I mean, was it like in a commercial or a movie or something? And all of a sudden it has to, it turned into like a, a cultural icon for for this uh, potential uh summer it's not a summer song anymore now it's a christmas song anyway we're rambling already as you can tell we have gone off the rails and we're only a few minutes in but that's okay we're going to talk about this last year and it's been a blur so who's going to start who wants to remember i can start if you want if everyone doesn't have a another thing that they want to share but is there anything that you remember from this year that you really wanted to pinpoint as the thing because i know it's kind of crazier yeah, I have a few things just off the top of my head recently for me personally, I got engaged. So that was a highlight. And um, Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! all right, pretty, that's a big one. pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's a big one that happened uh, little, uh, around Thanksgiving. So that was very exciting. And, um, you know, from a celebration standpoint, I know that with established ventures, our investing arm, some of our portfolio companies are really doing some amazing work. And not only that, but they're benefiting you know, communities in need that that also need some help, uh, you know, some underrepresented communities and those sorts of things. So I'm really proud of the work that we've done with established ventures and some of those portfolio companies helping the world. So those are my quick celebrations. That like is pretty awesome, John. Yes, totally agree with you on established ventures. And um, I'm just, I'm going to take it out there and say in 2021, uh, one of my favorite things, not to get, but to have was my vaccination shots because that really helped me feel uh, just so much better this year about the world and and made me really optimistic. So I was really happy about that. And then to to bring it back down to another level, just all the time, uh, you know, on the, the summer, like weekends going on the, to the beach and all of our beach walks and, and just a reminder um, of how great nature is 
and uh, and living here right on the coast has just been so awesome. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Absolutely. I, I echo both of your uh, celebratory things. I think um, you mentioned the, the vaccination and that's something that definitely is a memory, like actually getting that, getting fully vaccinated for the first time. And then now obviously they've moved the goal, goalposts a little bit to make it, you know, we boosted ourselves and everything, but back, I remember May, do you remember May? Like we were like, we were, we just got our, our shots and we we're like, Oh, it's May. And we're, we're good. <laughs> it's sunny and getting warm and we're going to go out and do things and stuff. And, you know, so anyway, I remember that and just being the joy of that. And obviously uh, I did enjoy the nature, as you mentioned, Jen, and, and uh, we are doing well in, in, in a lot of different ways. And so I obviously want to mention that and thankful for all, everything that's happened this year, even though it's been a blur and, um, you know, a little bit bumpy in the world, like as far as, um, you know, we're still in a pandemic and all that, but, but, but we've been able to spend more time with people like friends and relatives. And that's just been, that's been really great. Absolutely. And I also have to mention that you, Jen, actually brought out my ukulele recently, which has also been exciting. I've refound my ukulele, which I'll play a little tune for you. Just a holiday tune. I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully you can. This is a holiday edition of the Somewhat Frank podcast. So we can do whatever we want. I don't care. Uh, here we go. It's uh, If you can recognize it, uh, you win. I don't know what you win, but you win. Somewhere over the rainbow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a holiday tradition. Reindeer used to laugh and call him names. Rudolph. Rudolph. <laughs> they were let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. That's Rudolph. Good job, Jen. Way to pick that up. It's like the it's the Jack Johnson Frank Gruber remix. Rudolph yeah. remix. Ooh. Yeah, so anyway, that's been a joy to refine that little guy because it's less strings than a six string, obviously, and it's been fun to kind of play with sometimes. So anyway, those are those are just the little things in life, I guess, that, that bring joy. But uh, let's move on. We got we've been we've been uh, celebrating for a minute here, and I know we've got uh, lots to talk about. Uh, some some things we've been reading, uh, some really interesting things are happening out in the world. Um, and I guess I'll just jump right in. Um, I don't know if you, you guys wear spectacles. You you guys have glasses, right? Wear glasses. I do, and <laughs> I have for a very long time. I do as well. I don't. Refer, I don't think I've ever called them spectacles, but uh, I'm going to start. I, I love that. <laughs> this is uh, John. This is the holiday edition. We can do whatever we want. That's <laughs> oh, good. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to call them spectacles today. Anyway, I've been wearing them for just you know screens to keep my eyes, you know, the blue light, uh, I guess, out of my eyes, I guess, but, but as well as um, anyone that, that has uh, issues with, with sight and needs to wear um, them for reading for particularly, there's a, a really interesting new uh, eye drop that um, was just FDA approved that actually replaces reading glasses and it's, it's out and for sale. So you basically, instead of wearing reading glasses, you just put some drops in your eyes and you won't have to wear the spectacles anymore. We are calling them spectacles now, right? We are living in the future. This is magic. <laughs> I love it. I love this sorcery. Yep. So that's pretty cool. And I, I think that uh, more, obviously, we'd love to see the advancements in technology and making people's lives better. So that's really a thread that we, you know, all collectively have. And so making things better. So love that. Love seeing it. Um, kind of going to go the other direction because you're not supposed to actually look at the sun, um, right? For a long period of time, it can blind you. So, but you know, NASA actually just uh, touched the sun. The first first time in history, a spacecraft has touched the sun. I don't know if that went well or not, but you can read the article as we drop it in the show notes. Uh, what exactly happened? What do you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, I I love it. I mean, progression. You know, progressing towards anywhere in the solar system or galaxy is pretty amazing. I don't know if I want to touch the sun, right? I, I'm looking at the article right now. Um, <laughs> flew into the sun maybe a better word for it but uh no it looks like they got really close and uh but it's pretty it's pretty cool so it was the upper atmosphere of the sun and it was protected by this the parker's high-tech heat shielding um so it's i mean this is just this is one of those things that growing up you always heard like the sun is so hot there's nothing that could ever get close to it and in our lifetimes we're seeing this progress and like you said john this is it's just so amazing that we get to see this type of um progress and innovation in our lifetime and you know i know there's a lot of debate about you know money going into outer space but truly this is our world this is our universe we understanding these things can only help us and uh, i i just think these these innovations are incredible 
Yeah, no, definitely. Speaking of innovations, um, there's a new innovation happening out. Uh, Hebrew U just created a blood test that could cre- basically could eliminate painful biopsies. So we've you know all had things biops- biopsied in the past, I'm sure. And so um, this is a new way of doing it that just is checking out your blood. So again, another innovation, making life better. <laughs> so drop the scalpel or a laser or whatever, and now you can just do it via blood test. So pretty cool stuff there too. Uh, yes, That's- please. <laughs> near, near and dear to my heart that's yeah. uh that's really that's a great any sorts of, anything like that that can cause people less pain is um just just amazing stuff yep similarly they uh there's some innovations out there for needless shots so i mean it, the first time i ever heard that i thought that's just how is that even possible but yeah it just kind of shoots the medication right in through your skin <laughs> I mean, skin is permeable, permeable and, and to a point, right? So, I mean, even eggs are, right? So I think it's kind of interesting. We don't see the little little holes, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool that you'd be able to do that and obviously you wouldn't feel the pain. I mean, it reminds me of our friend that actually got a, was it a BB stuck in his, his finger? Didn't even know it for years. And then it like, it burst out, burst out of his finger, like, because he had gotten shot in a, by a BB gun years ago, like as a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah, crazy. Our friend, and all of a sudden we were actually there for the birthing and it was phenomenal, but also really I, kind of gross. But at the same time, I'm happy for him because he had this thing and, he, and, you know, he never actually knew what it was, thought it was a BB, but ultimately it was a BB. It just came came out because it, it was basically just like your shots, Jen, pushed through and didn't even know it. What was amazing was he could stick for a long time, it, like if a magnet was near his fingertip, it would stick to his finger. And that's how he knew <laughs> And finally, like you said, his body, because bodies are amazing things, uh, just sort of forced it out. And yes, we were uh, fortunate or unfortunate to witness it. I think keeping with the theme of this, (laughs) of this. uh, But shout out to Captain Matt. Shout out to Captain Matt. That was his finger. Go ahead, Johnny. I was going to say that since it is the holiday, you know, version, we can call things what we want. I like that you called it birthing of a BB out of a person's (laughs) finger. (laughs) It's the best way I could describe it, John. Yeah, I I definitely loud and clear. I I know exactly (laughs) what you're what you're saying. It was a a good descriptive uh, phrase. So love it. All right. So, all right. So let's, where are we moving from this? We're, we're kind of all over the place, here. <laughs> but um, we've been probably getting a lot of mail lately, right? Y'all have been getting packages. Anybody? Oh, Johnny, did you get us just get a package? You said you just got I a did. Package. I've been getting unbelievable amount of packages lately. And I know that our uh, established team did uh, Elfster this year, which is kind of our secret Santa or white elephant, whatever you want to call it. And I just now received mine and it is from my friend and colleague, Jen Consalvo, who's also on this call. Yay. So should I open it while, while I'm on the call here with you guys? Would that yes. be fun? Yes, please. Yes. All right, here we go. I hope my microphone picks up on this, so let me know, okay? But here we go. You guys hear me opening the package? Yes, it's definitely coming through loud and clear. <laughs> is it? Okay, <laughs> yeah. good. Oh, this is really cool. So let me see. It's Duke Cannon Supply Company. Big old brick of hunting soap scent eliminator. Oh, thank you, Jen. So I think that you you used. I don't know what she's trying to tell you there, Johnny. But uh, well, either either (laughs) way, I'll I'll take it as a. And then what else is this? This is Northeast Woods Hardcore Hand Care. So it's a a type of soap or not a soap. It looks like a lotion of some sort to keep your hands from cracking. So yeah, it smells, it smells like pine needles. It's the lit. Thank you. This is amazing. John, I, I see. I think of you as this like, you know, burly outdoorsman who's, you know, out in his cabin and has an ax and is chopping wood <laughs> and everything and, and going out for the hunt. So, you know, I, I went up to um, our, one of our favorite places, Kittery Trading Post uh, in Maine and, um, and found a few good, products for the outdoorsman in my life so. <laughs> well i love it i'll take it as a compliment i thank you very much and uh you know i try to transcend all sorts of different um genres of human beings let's call it maybe a uh you know but um you know having run technology companies and being an attorney in the past and now i have a, a farm and i'm rough and rugged as you said jen so i'll take that as a compliment thank you oh, very it definitely much. is definitely is renaissance man for sure Better gifts renaissance man there you go thank you very much this is awesome it smells good awesome you're very welcome all right so moving along here okay so moving along here 
Um, let's see here. We've got, uh, I was talking about mailboxes and actually the interesting thing was, I was wondering, did that come by drone mailbox? Because drone mail mailboxes are coming. And uh, there's an article we just dropped. Axios put an article out about a, a patent that was uh, created right before Amazon got to created their patent. So they beat them, beat Amazon to creating this pack patent for a mailbox where your drone deliveries could be just dropped. So that's pretty interesting stuff. Oh, and it's an Indiana company. Yes. Nice. So that's why I was asking, Johnny, is that is that how you got it? I actually think that, no, I did not, by the way. It came uh, UPS, I believe, and which are which are pretty good to my neighborhood. But um, yeah, that's, that, I actually think I've ran across this company in the past. So that's that's interesting that, to see these, you know, drone mailboxes. Pretty cool. I, I'm interested. I always get curious about the liability with this type, this type of stuff, not only for the packages, but if they fly into something or break something or hurt someone, right? Like where the liability runs with those sorts of things. Maybe that's the you know, attorney and me, but, um, I mean, it's pretty cool. I, I, I love it. If, you know, assuming it works, that should, should. So that's, that's great. Yes. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's see, we're going to move on here. Um, do you want to talk about our speedy new passports? Go for it. All right. So exciting stuff here. Um, <laughs> in the federal government here has actually signed an order that will allow for online us passport renewal. So I don't know why we haven't done this for years. Like, why has it been so hard before? So, you know, hats off to the current administration uh, for doing this because it's going to allow us to be able to renew our passports without having to go somewhere, without having to like stand in line, without, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a it's pretty cool uh, ability to be able to do that. And obviously a lot of states have moved to being able to renew uh, your driver's license as well that way. So I'm hoping that more things move that direction. Seriously, there are so many things like this that could be simplified. And just to, to throw a little bone at, um, uh, there's another podcast we listen to, and and uh, the the host was talking about how, you know, people people tend to get a bad taste in their mouth about government because of the local stuff, right, or the stuff that impacts them on a day to day basis, whether it's you know the post office or the DMV or you know just that kind of stuff that that grates on you, which is like when you really need a passport and you can't get it in time, um, or your driver's license. And there are so many opportunities, just like this, that could completely change the the you know the the hassle and the way that people have to interact. Uh, with different types of, of, you know, government processes, um, everything from taxes to passports to driver's license to you name it. And um, hopefully, like you said, Frank, this is going to be a trend. We'll see more of this because honestly, if we can just make these things simpler, it just saves so much time and probably a ton of money too. So that's that's just my my opinion. <laughs> that's why I brought it up. Uh, not that we're going to be traveling anywhere internationally now, lately because we've got another variant coming through, not to be the Debbie, Debbie Downer here, but but either way, it's nice to have those things ready to go. And, um, you know, a lot of the places that unfortunately are closing their borders again. So I feel like we're but back. Keeping, keeping an active passport around just makes me hopeful. <laughs> Well, it's just like I can just take a look at my passport, you know, look at the look at past trips and just think about, ooh, where do I want to go? It'll happen. Do you know yeah. how many people, I can only imagine how many people, as soon as the pandemic is over and the world yeah. opens back up again, are going to realize their passports are expired. Right. It's going to be like a flood of people trying to get <laughs> their is. passports. They're going to crash the servers. Right. Well, that and, and TSA Pre is another one that's similar, right? To get that thing like lined up and ready to go. It's, it's hard to do. You have to do that in person, interviews, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully they can renew all that stuff online too, soon too, because you're right. It's going to be a bunch of our stuff is going to be ready to go. And we, nobody's been wanting to go to the DMV or any other place to get this stuff locked in. So um, thought, thought I'd share that. Um, one cool thing coming out um, in case you wanted to keep uh, tabs on if, if, you know, the COVID is fly, flying around your face. Um, there's a new scientist that invented a mask that glows when exposed to COVID virus, COVID-19 virus. And I don't know why we call it still COVID-19. Literally, we're in COVID-2021. I mean, shouldn't it just be called COVID at this point? It was never about the year. Oh, interesting. It was it was about the number, the, oh. the, the, the actual um, virus. It wasn't about the year that it was founded. So it's just irony? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that, that virus keeps slapping us in the face, right? With the irony. Anyway, that's um, interesting. And so now you can go, to, we'll drop a link in the, in the, uh, in the show notes, but there's a scientist that created this thing that, you know, more or less changes color, glows in the dark actually, or glows 
I don't know if it's in the dark, if you've been exposed to COVID. So it would be nice because, I mean, we I use a lot of recycled or reuse, reuse masks and things like that. I'd love to know if I'm ever um, in a situation where I've been encountering COVID or whatever, because I'd be watching that thing and immediately. That's a, that's a horror movie, though, if you think about it. Like, what if we were all at a conference and then all of a sudden we just are all glowing and staring at each other, just screaming and running around? That would be, that would be uh, I don't know if that's exactly the response everyone would have, but that would be pretty, pretty nuts. Oh, wow. That would be crazy. You know what it reminds me of, Johnny? It reminds me of back in the day in college, we had, everyone had, had to have that, that, um, that glow in the dark, you know, black light situation where you, oh, yeah. you know, they, they got the crazy like lights and this, I mean, it's basically going to be kind of like that, right? I don't know. Yeah. You just don't want to walk around a dorm or a frat house with one of those. No, no, no. Black light. <laughs> black light to see bad stuff. But Frank, I'm going to take back what I said. It, it was it was about the year. It was the year it was first detected, I believe. And yeah, I thought it was. Says, so you're right. I'm sorry. I, I take that back. Um, I thought I had heard something that it, it was not, but it was after the year it was detected, not after the year that we were all sort of impacted. Right. COVID-19 is from 2019. Right. So they, should, yeah. they should call it. They should call it 2019 through COVID 19. <laughs> yes, through, exactly. Through 22. Yeah, something like or 24, whatever. The yeah. never-ending COVID. Right. I'm just calling it the vid from now on. Anyway, moving on. Let's let's talk about what's coming up. I know we've got a hard hard stop here soon. We've got a lot going on today, and we're trying to squeeze a podcast out. And uh, basically, we've got a lot of upcoming news, upcoming things. Like we've, we're talking, we're prepping, we're getting ready to go to Tampa, Florida. It's coming up on January 25th to 27th. It's our summit, Startup of the Year Summit. You can go to summit.startupofyear.com to learn more about it. We've got some great people coming through, great speakers. We've got hundreds of companies and founders coming through to be a part of it. We're going to name our Startup of the Year. It's going to be in person. Um, we're excited about being in Tampa, even with the current situation with COVID, like a lot of our stuff's going to be outside. So that's exciting for us. It's going to be warmer weather for a lot of people, including ourselves. So um, excited about, about that. We're working with Embark Collective as our local host. And we've also got uh, ReliaQuest as our, our key title sponsor and a number of others. So exciting stuff happening there. Uh, I know CES is coming up quick. And um, basically, we've got a team heading out to CES as well. The uh, Consumer Technology Association Foundation is bringing back their CES pitch competition, and it's sponsored by AARP uh, Innovation Labs. And so that's going to be coming out. Uh, that's going to be happening as well on the Thursday of, of, of CES. And they've got some great um, prizes, which include uh, some you know, uh, uh, cash, actually. So that's pretty cool. So uh, some companies are going to win some cash at, at the Eureka Park. So good stuff coming there. And I know I'm trying to, I'm trying to speed through here because I know we've got a hard stop so i'll keep rattling off and uh if you guys want to jump in feel free but we move on to the one more thing what we've been reading and watching so reading and watching we've got uh i've been reading wim hof his uh wim hof method which is amazing i don't know if you guys are familiar with it but it's basically about uh restarting your vascular system through cold and cold water specifically and so um, my key takeaway so far, and I'm not done with it yet, but I've been doing it, it uh, some of the things in it, um, there's definitely breathing techniques, things like that. But uh, if you take 30 seconds or longer of a cold shower after a warm shower, it helps restart your vascular system. So keep that in mind next time you take a shower. All right. We'll do. That's, that's pretty fascinating. Too. All right. So, so I've been reading the same book, but what I want to mention is I, this time of year just really made me want to watch Harry Potter. So I've been <laughs> in, in, a, in between the moments, I just kind of pop it on my phone on HBO Max and I have been watching the series. I'm up to number three. Wow. Yeah. Jen, you think it's a, Jen thinks it's a, um, a holiday movie. Isn't that funny? I, I, I never well, think of it because that. they, they always came out in like November ish, right? Like during the holidays. And there always seems to be some winter holiday scene in Hogwarts, which right. was, was be a beautiful scene and the choirs and the music. So yes, it reminds me of the holidays. Yeah. yeah I, I would agree. I would agree with some of that too. And I know that there are some, uh, some movies in the series that are more, holiday specific um but you're right they're, they're they all do incorporate some sort of a holiday magic to them additionally i know that whenever i go home to visit my parents over the holidays it's on repeat on like one of those channels you know i don't even tnt or something where yeah. it's like a 24-hour loop of harry potter movies so it reminds yeah. me that it, i thought i i agree with you jenna it, it reminds me of the holidays as well yeah and they're all um on hbo max now so we've been cruising through them there and yeah through number three we'll probably keep moving and my favorite though holiday movie is definitely Elf. I'd have to put that as my 
my number one still. I, we, I growing up, we'd always watch Christmas Story, but I feel like, um, and that's one that's also also on loop. I feel like on a lot of stations. But what about you, Johnny? Those are both good ones. I have to tell you, my and we were just talking about this the other night. My uh, Christmas movie that flies under the radar. I don't know if y'all have seen Fred Claus with uh, Vince Vaughn, but it is Ooh. a. It's just a. It's a really good underrated Christmas movie. Fred Claus. We'll have to add we'll check that. it out. It's awesome. really good. And it's, it is kid friendly. So you, you know, the little Even ones better. can watch it. It's really good. It's really good. All right. On that note, everyone have a happy holiday season. And thank you everybody for listening this year. We'll be back soon with another episode. Anybody want to say anything else before we go? Happy holidays, stay safe and have just a wonderful time on your weekend, no matter what you celebrate. Happy holidays, everyone. Hug your loved ones and enjoy the new year. Be safe. All right. This is a wrap. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Somewhat Frank episode. I have lost track, but it's been a great year. Everyone be safe out there, and, and we'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks for listening to another Somewhat Frank podcast episode. Be sure to rate and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to celebrate your wins, small and large, with gratitude. It will make your journey more enjoyable. We'll be back soon with another episode.